Are you ready? Whoa! That's pretty strong. <laughs> Who's winning? The robot. I, I don't want to break you, man. What do I do now? Is it going to let go? No. It's not going to let go? Dr. D Flow. So we were programming the robot and the shoulder started to lose power. At first we thought it was a connection issue, we checked all the connections, no problem there. So we disassembled the shoulder and found out that the pulleys on both of the stepper motors were slipping. Even stranger, when we tried to remove the pulleys, which are, again are going to be sandwiched in between the plastic, we couldn't do that because they were stuck. So they were slipping but they were stuck. and. In the end, we had to hammer the shaft in order to get the pulley off. Uh, we're not sure about the consequences of that yet, but I know you guys hate it when I'm hammering on these shafts, and it does look slightly bent. So, uh, well, we're a little, a little bit of a setback, but to fix it, we're going to use Loctite to make sure it doesn't slip. We should have done this in the, in the beginning, but generally you don't want to start gluing stuff down before you know everything works. So hopefully this solves the problem permanently, and hopefully the shaft's not bent, because that will be a much bigger problem. Yeah. The problem didn't quite stop there. It took two goes at applying the Loctite. On the first time, the glue dried before the pulley was fully seated, so we had to use acetone to remove it and then reapply the Loctite. And now we're currently not seeing any slipping. Because we had to remove the shoulder, we decided to replace the glow-in-the-dark gear with a newly minted golden gear. We ran into kind of a dumb problem here. To get the gripper working, we need to connect the gripper drive gear to the servo motor. But as you can see, they don't just fit onto each other. So to do, to do this, we're going to use a mounting plate. And this we will screw into the gripper drive gear. And then this will connect here. But the problem is, this screw is just too long to connect these, which means that we're going to either have to cut this screw in half or we're just going to have some wiggle in the mounting plate. So both are not quite optimal solutions, but we're going to have to choose one or the other. We decided to go for the wiggle and it turned out okay. The startup procedure for the robotic arm is pretty simple. Plug it in and the Raspberry Pi will turn on. Then release the emergency stop to make sure that the driver board is receiving power. Finally, use the touch screen to double click on the file which is located conveniently on our desktop. And that's it, the robot is ready to receive commands. Hey guys, it's Jeff. We're gonna be programming the robotic arm to pick up this remote and then bring it back up. Uh, we have the keyboard set up here so that when we save a point, we can give it a name to use later on. Uh, to get started, we need our Xbox controller. The first thing we need to do is set a home position for the robot. So I like the spot where it is right now. So what you do is you press start. And that means that this position is now the home position. The second thing we need to do is move the robotic arm into the place that we want it to be. So I'm going to move it right in front of the remote so it can uh, pick it up later. It's moving slowly right now, but when we save it to the program, it's going to run a lot faster. This basically just means that we can't accidentally break anything as we're trying to program it. The robotic arm is now in position to pick up the remote. To save the point, we press B, and then we type in what we want to name the point, and then it's all set. So we've already defined opening and closing the gripper in the code, so we don't need to worry about that. To start the program, we press X. Nice. The first time we programmed it, uh, we just had to pick up the remote, which was kind of boring. So now we're going to have it pick up the remote, bring it up, move it to a different spot, and put it back down. So once again, we're going to go through the same process. We're going to home the robotic arm by pressing start, and then we're going to move it down to the spot where you want to pick up the remote. So this is going to be the first spot where it picks up the remote. So to save the spot, once again, we press B, and then give it a name. And then we're going to move it to put down 
a different, put down the remote at a different spot. This looks okay. Let's give it a shot, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> nice. Nice. They put it down so hard. <laughs> it's like, take it. Easy. Do it, do it again, do it one more time. Easy AF. <laughs> so, so easy. It was like, <laughs> It's because these, these have so much more power, I, I think. Know, I know. <laughs> okay. Now that we know the robotic arm kind of works, we're going to put something a lot more dangerous in its hands. What we have here is a hot soldering iron and the robotic arm is basically gonna act as our third hand. Uh, we have it facing the camera just so you guys can see better, but otherwise we turn it this way so we could do it right in front of us. Dr. D-Flow is putting some soldering iron, or solder, right onto the soldering iron. And then we're gonna solder two wires together. Nice, a perfect solder. Most likely, you would have had your wires clamped. So you can use this guy as your steady arm and you can really focus and make sure that you get a great solder connection. Even better, you can have a second arm holding the solder and then you don't have to do anything. One thing many of you guys are probably wondering is, can it tend a 3D printer? And the answer is yes. Theoretically, if you wanted to mass produce Benchy, you would need someone or something to take it off after every hour or two. So here we have our first of a couple million Benchies that we're about to print. So Dr. D-Flow promoted me to Benchy removal, but it kind of seemed like a demotion. So instead, I programmed the robotic arm to take off Benchy when it was done. So if you are a... Super sleuth. Really? Yeah, man. Okay. So if you are a super sleuth and notice that Benchy moved a little bit between being printed off and being picked up, this is due to a small coding error on our part when we first try to pick it up. If you are wondering, the gripper definitely has enough force to break the bed adhesion. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name is Dr. D Flow. And I'm Jeff. Thanks. What, Jeff? Jeff, come on, man. It's the end of the video. Whoa. Oh, we forgot. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe for our next video on the bladeless fan.